Uh, hi, my name is still Rebecca Snowden. I am a senior at Scott Catholic. I like your words, Kaka! And this poem is dedicated to my grandma, and it's titled The Second Time Around. I keep holding on to the things you left. Your sweater green couch found a new home in our living room. I take all of my most important naps on it. I flip through your old sketchbook often, its yellowed pages telling of all the places you thought beautiful enough to take down as they were. The fishing boat that the not yet grandpa bought, the beachside sunbathers, and the afternoon skyscrapers. I found a pair of your earrings in the boxes of stuff still in our basement, and they were clip-ons. I know you had your ears pierced, but for some reason you held on to these. I tell myself this is just temporary. I'll keep these warm for you. Wait for your wisps of cloud-soft white hair to float through the door and dogs to herald your return. Because why wouldn't you? A person always makes time to return. There's a great something that we work around, a something that keeps us out of the ground. This something gives second chances. There's no unsatisfying end, no one and done deal, because when we leave, we always find ourselves leaving something. I left my food at home, gives me a reason to come back. I left my heart in Brussels, gives me that reason to push and run flat into a stream of wind, the easiest current to catch that scent again. The something gives second chances. So why didn't you get one? I never expected you to vanish like you did, as though you took your keys and grabbed your coat, evaporating from this life in the coldest month like it was an Australian summer. Even though you left all these reminders behind you, these bits of pleas to come back, I haven't felt you yet. When you died, I kept the scent of tears in my notepads, carried heaviness like I deserved it, and forgot to turn on the house lights. I sat on your sweater couch, I fingered the edges of sketchbooks, I wore earrings on my not pierced ears. I felt the firm stretch of this fabric, the tight clasp of coldness on my skin, but I didn't feel you. And then one day I did. The most holy experience I've ever had was not in a chapel, not in a church, not in a synagogue or prayer group. The most holy experience I've ever had was on a slam stage. I spoke about your last days to the acoustics of the Joslin Concert Hall, and I swear, coming down those stairs, knowing in my heart that it would be the last time speaking it, even though it wasn't, I heard you. I felt the warmth of your frail, manicured hand brush past the softness of your thinned hair. I heard you. I love you, too. It's not that there wasn't the choice. I had been thinking and hoping and racing through hallways, trying to hunt down what it was you would come back to. And I finally realized that you didn't leave anything behind. You took off running to the nearest source of wind you could find and let yourself go. I am letting you go. The slipstream has carried you away to new lives distant from us, and I know that someday, when you do decide to come around again, whether it's on a stage or when I'm coming to meet you myself, you'll carry this poem with you. My reminder to come home. <laughs>